Hi, I'm Karen Hurt. And I'm David Dye, and we're the CEO and president of Let's Grow Leaders. And the authors of Powerful Phrases for Dealing with Workplace Conflict, What to Say Next, to De-Stress the Workday, Foster Collaboration, and Calm Difficult Customers. So let's talk a little bit about why we wrote the book. Yeah, I, for me, the ability to have a difficult conversation at work where there's conflict and, and we have intense disagreement, uh, for me, one of my earliest memories goes back to uh, I was working with a CEO who I radically disagreed with. He wanted to do this marketing event. I thought it lacked integrity. And I stewed about it for three, four, five days, stayed up, oh, so upset. How could he do this? And finally, at the end of my rope, I kind of exploded, didn't use any of the powerful phrases in our book. And I said, you know, I don't like this. It lacks integrity to me. And he said, well, David, I don't see it that way. But I don't want your integrity to be on the line either, which was the last thing that I ever expected to hear. And then he asked me, he said, what do you think we can do to make this work for you? One small change, and I was able to recommend that. The thing worked. We had a good solution and I got a reputation for being a problem solver and somebody who's trying to lead in a good way. That's never what I expected. You know, we tell ourselves all these stories about all the bad things that can happen. And for me, that was such a lesson from him about all the good that can happen when we productively engage in conflict. And so that for me is one of the reasons why I thought this book was so important. How about for you? You know, it's interesting how frequently clients, you know, we work all through all kinds of organizations all over the world, all levels, and we're constantly hearing, just tell me what to say. Just tell me what to say in this conflict. And of course, you can't have a powerful phrase that is exactly right in, for every moment anybody is going to encounter. But I do think, you know, well, except maybe please, thank you, and don't put that up your nose, which, which usually is said too late, works. right? Never works. So, you know, we can give people words to help them think, to empower meaning, to foster collaboration, to give them the courage to speak up. And I think that, you know, when 21% of the people in our research right, said, um, I wish I had spoken up sooner, right? And why didn't they? Where is that fear coming from? Is they didn't know where to start. And so this book really has four dimensions of collaboration and it gives people some starter words that they can then build on. Well, let's talk more about the research and why we decided to do research talking about workplace conflict. People have been having conflict at work for forever. So why the research? Yeah, so this is the World Workplace Conflict and Collaboration Survey. Uh, we study people in 46 countries, uh, all the 50 United States, 5,000 participants, to really answer some questions. Is conflict getting worse now, you know, since the pandemic, or is it better? And then we also ask this question. Think about a big workplace conflict that you had. And what advice would you give your former self if you were faced with this conflict again? And the findings were really fascinating, so why don't you share some of the highlights? Yeah, at the top level, 70% of people, of those 5,000 folks we, we surveyed around the world, said that workplace conflict is as bad as it's ever been or getting worse. 30% uh, said that they are having less. But when you look into a little bit deeper into that 30% who say, yeah, I'm having less, and you ask them why, well, half of that group, it's basically they escaped conflict. They changed jobs, they left a, a conflict prone place, or they're working from home and they're saying, yeah, I'm not around people, so I'm not having any conflict with people. But then lost in that is all the creativity, the productivity that can come from having a good engagement and collaboration. And so a, a lot of challenges, many of which are due to things that happened coming out of the pandemic. So then we asked, all right, for those of you having more conflict, where's it coming from? And uh, three of the, the big reasons that there's more, uh, one is pandemic-related anxiety, stress. You've got all of the uh, challenges that are happening with uh, uh, people being overwhelmed. There's not enough staff, all those kinds of challenges. Uh, poor management practices. And before we get down on our managers, managers are facing unprecedented complexity in how they're leading and what challenges they're facing with leading remote and hybrid teams. Uh, having to deal with a workforce who is needing more and more connection uh, and investment, but with whom those managers are feeling more and more disconnection because of all of the, the changes in the workplace. So lots of different challenges causing that conflict. Yeah. 
So, and then people's advice, if they were faced with a conflict again, 55% said, I wish I could stay calm. Yeah. And so how do you empower people to stay calm? Because telling somebody to stay calm is <laughs> about the worst thing you could do to actually stay calm. Yeah. So there are really four dimensions of uh, collaboration, of having these challenging conversations. So let's, let's start with connection. Yeah, so the first of these four dimensions is connection. Do we know one another as human beings? And so in any conversation that you're having, we recommend that if you only read a few phrases, we call them our goats, the greatest of all time. And there are 12, three for each dimension. So what are a couple of the goat phrases that help us to build that connection? Yeah, right my favorite is, I really care about you and this team and this project, and I'm confident that we can find a solution. And you know, I think that's such, you're, expre you're creating that human connection and you're expressing the confidence. Another very simple one is tell me more and then uh, reflect to connect, which sounds like you're feeling and then you insert the, uh, the emotion. You're not telling people how they feel, but it sounds to me like you might be feeling frustrated. Is that right? What's going on? And those three goals for connection can be really powerful. Want to talk about clarity? Yeah, clarity is uh, the source, a lack of clarity is the source of so much workplace conflict. And uh, you know, if we're working off different scripts and trying to go different directions, of course there's gonna be conflict. So a couple of phrases that can help with that. Uh, one of our favorites is checking for understanding. And it's just in a conversation say, so what I'm hearing you say is this, do I have that right? And just ensuring that we're on the same page. Another one of my favorite goats for clarity is what would a successful outcome do for you? You know, so often we focus on the thing that we want to achieve and the, the outcome that we're looking for, but what we really need to know is what would that outcome do for the other person? And what do we need? What does our outcome do for us? Once we know that, now we're in a position where we can move to the third dimension and start to problem solve. Yeah, but we've got to talk about the third clarity goat because that's my, my favorite, which is what's one thing we agree on? To find that common ground, get clarity around that common ground first can really make all the difference. And then curiosity. I think curiosity is my, my favorite dimension because it's, you know, do, are we really showing up actually curious and looking at what other possibilities are available to us? And so a couple of the curiosity phrases, you know, it, it starts with, uh, well, you know, what do you, Think we should do next you know so like what ideas do you have here is is one good curiosity phrase what's one of your favorites one of my favorites uh, ways to get curious is uh, how does this look from your perspective it is so interesting to me what I learn when I ask that question uh, and we all walk in with our own models our own perspective on how things work and our own sense of right wrong and and so forth and to just ask that set all aside and say how's this look from your perspective opens the door to so much and then the, the fourth dimension is commitment. And this, do we have a shared agreement? And this is where so many conflicts, it's like Groundhog Day, they keep going and going and going because you don't get to these commitment phrases. So this is where you're, you're driving the conversation to what's next and what's possible. Yeah, so what is one step we can take moving forward? So we're actually aligning on what the action looks like. And one of uh, my very favorite of all of the phrases is we call this scheduling the finish. But it's about setting a specific time and having a conversation about when we are going to follow up on the agreement we just made. So if we make an agreement that we're going to exchange data in a certain way and we need to brief our teams on that uh, or talk to our managers or what have you, when is that happening? And how are we going to circle back and make sure that we've done it? Put it on both of our calendars. Now we have an agreement of when we're going to follow up. Increases the likelihood that we'll take action and if we can't, now we have a built-in chance to do something with the interruptions, the exceptions that happen. Yeah, so in the book, we talk about all these conflict cocktails, you know, all of these situations where conflict can escalate and make it very easy for you to say, okay, oh, somebody just stole my idea. Let me go to this chapter and here's some conversation starters to show up connected, create clarity of intention, to be curious in that situation, to drive towards a commitment. What if you're, and then some, what if you're dealing with a matrix organization? What if you're dealing with a boss who is a you know, screamer or a dropper of F-bombs? And so it's talking about difficult people, difficult scenarios, 
and including the conversations that you need to have with yourself to have the courage to have the conversation, to initiate the conversation. And then finally, what do you do if you've had this conversation and it doesn't work and the conflict doesn't stop? Yeah. How do you know when it's time to leave? I gotta say, I am super excited about this book. I'm, I'm very proud because I think that if you read this book, people who get in their hands, it's going to help. It is gonna it's help. It's practical and it's got specific ways for people to deal with all these different kinds of conversations. So I am curious, as we're having this conversation, if somebody's thinking about their workplace conflict and you had one piece of advice for them right now, what would it be? Have the conversation. You know, I keep, I keep thinking about people that we talk to and we coach and they're like, they are so relieved when they, you know, like, oh my gosh, I've been talking myself in and out of this conversation for three months. I finally had the conversation. I feel so much better now. Just have the conversation. It's amazing what happens when you give the other person a chance to make a different choice. But if you never give them that chance, your silence is actually selfish. So have the conversation. 